This is Lois Whaley for Women Today and Yesterday. This is a red letter a day because I have two guests today. Usually I only have one, and there's only several times over the course of 10 years that I've actually had two guests. <laughs> so um, one of my guests is Christy Ridinger, and uh, she is uh, with Planned Parenthood of Ohio and also especially of the Athens office. Yep. Is that right? That is correct. That's correct. And my other guest is Susan Quinn. Susan is a local woman who has volunteered for a long time with Planned Parenthood. And so glad that you could come, Susan. Thank you, Lois. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for asking me. So one of the first things we want to mention for sure is that uh, Planned Parenthood is uh, celebrating a hundred years. It's centennial, which actually occurred um, last year in 2016. And um, Planned Parenthood is getting around to celebrating this year in 2017. So um, the event is going to be on June 9th. You see on the, um, you, you can see the date, June 9th there, and uh, Planned Parenthood 100th century, one century old. Now, uh, can you tell us something about that, Susan? That, uh, yes, I'd be event? happy to. I'd be happy to, Lois. This is actually an expansion of the annual Planned Parenthood fundraiser that we have here in Athens that's been called the Chocolate and Champagne Event. This is a centennial and champagne event. Uh, Again, we're carrying that theme of uh, Planned Parenthood being 100 years old. As you said, it's next Friday, um, uh, January 9th at 6.30 at, Walter, uh, at Margaret Walter Rotunda. We will have a silent um, auction. We'll have a cash bar and heavy um, hors d'oeuvres. And we're going to have the honor of a guest artist. Her name is Nikki Johnson. She's done um, art. Uh, she's a curator as well. And her, um, her interest focuses on women and justice issues. So Nikki will be our featured guest oh, and, nice. and speaker at that event. Yes, there are still tickets available. Um, tickets uh, start at $100. Um, you can go on the website. That would be www. Uh, let me cheat. ppgoh.org to purchase tickets. Um, there are, we still have some seats available, and I would encourage your listeners to go online and purchase tickets if they are interested in attending. Fine. Well, we got ours early, so I think we're all set, my husband and I, that Excellent. is. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, that will be next uh, Friday. That will be next Friday. Now, the, the um, other locations in the Ohio Planned Parent Affiliate have had uh, fundraising events as well. There was a fundraising event in Columbus and in Cleveland. Together, those two events, in, and I think that was held May 16th and May 17th. May 16th was Columbus. May 17th was Cleveland. Together, they raised over a million dollars for wow. Planned Parenthood of Greater Ohio. Wonderful. Yes. So we're very help hopeful that this will be a, a great fundraiser for the Southeast Ohio Clinic yes. um, that Christy works in. Uh, this is one of the primary ways to fund the Planned Parenthood Clinic here in Athens. Mm -hmm. um, so to show support for the cause, but very specifically to keep your donations local, to make sure that the donations go to help men and women who come to the Planned Parenthood Clinic here. Yes. attend the event next week. Wonderful. <laughs> but I, as uh, uh, Susan mentioned, Christy, uh, there have been other events, certainly, uh, around uh, Ohio. Um, can you let us know how many Planned Parenthood uh, clinic locations there are in the state? Sure. So Planned Parenthood of Greater Ohio is a widespread affiliate throughout Ohio. Um, I believe there's 18 health centers throughout Northeast, Central, and Southeast Ohio. So it's, it's mm -hmm. a large affiliate. We serve a lot of the population of Ohio's women needing right. reproductive care. 
But they don't have one in Dayton or uh, Cincinnati, or perhaps that's in a different area. Yes, so there is also an additional affiliate in Ohio. That's the Planned Parenthood of Southwest Ohio affiliate. Oh, I see. So that encompasses Cincinnati and Dayton, and right. then we are the rest of Ohio. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, they split them up that way, don't they, <laughs> sometimes? Uh, actually, my uh, religious denomination, which is Unitarian Universalist, as that same pattern. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dayton and uh, Cincinnati, actually, I believe they're part of a sort of Ohio Valley. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the other rest of Ohio is united with West Virginia and Western Pennsylvania, actually. Oh, interesting. So All it's right. a big area. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, well, I'd like to find out a little bit more about you ladies personally, uh, especially how you, first of all, how you became interested in Planned Parenthood in the first place. Thank you for asking the question. Um, I was a Planned Parenthood patient when I um, was younger. I remember I found out about Planned Parenthood for the first time in my ninth grade health class. This oh, really? goes back to 1974. Oh. Um, a representative from Planned Parenthood gave, uh, attended the class and gave a lecture on um, human reproduction. And I remembered that this um, woman, which is, it was, um, it was very interesting. She asked for us to put questions in a hat mm -hmm. and pass them up. And our questions were read, um, you know, with complete, um, completely anonymously. Mm -hmm. And you could have heard a pin drop. Mm -hmm. And we had, it was such a fascinating session. Um, at the end of her talk to our health class, she said, now the clinic is located behind the laundry facilities at the hospital. I am 14 sitting in health class. Mm -hmm. I made a note of that, and several years later, I was a patient at the clinic. I received very good care, and I received care completely for free um, at, at, at the young years in my life. So then, fast forward, I go through college, I go through professional school, I open practice here in Athens. Mm -hmm. I employ uh, 10 people. Some of the women that worked for me didn't have health insurance, and they would go to Planned Parenthood. Most healthy women of reproductive age uh, really need to have yearly reproductive medical care, but typically don't go to the doctor for anything else. Mm -hmm. And I found out that they were patients at the local Planned Parenthood clinic. I put two and two together. I connected my experience to, as a business person now, mm -hmm. um, the, the close relationship I have with women that continue to seek that care, and I thought I should become more involved. So that started my volunteer efforts with this organization. I now serve on the um, Planned Parenthood Board for Greater Ohio. Mm -hmm. and um, uh, happy to be involved in that group and I hope to continue to work in advocacy, um, particularly in education, again yes. going back to my first experience in health class in right. ninth grade. Well, Christy, how about you? How did you first get involved with Planned Parenthood? Yeah, so um, mine was during college. Mm -hmm. I uh, was involved in sexuality studies and education. Mm -hmm. That was my minor. I heard about the wonderful ways that Planned Parenthood helps the women who are often underserved, as well as men who are underserved, mm -hmm. um, and just thought that that was a great resource, and I wanted to do what I could to make sure that I could help in that effort. So when I graduated, I looked around for jobs, found that Planned Parenthood in Columbus was available, and I was so excited when I got that position. Oh, and I'm yeah. so excited still, six years later, that uh -huh. I'm still involved in this organization. I think it does great work. Yes. So you were actually a, a college student seven or eight years ago? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Seven or right. eight. Right. Well, um, I should mention how I got involved with Planned Parenthood. Please. Um, as you can see from my gray hair, I'm... Uh, well, actually, my husband and I will soon be celebrating our 63rd wedding anniversary. Congratulations. In Wonderful. In early July. We were married in 1954. 
just before a long uh, weekend, you know, Fourth of July weekend, and so that turned out to be our honeymoon. Well, uh, we were both students at the University of Michigan at the time, and we wanted to make sure that we could continue uh, our studies, and especially for uh, young women, uh, you know, if, if babies come sooner than really uh, the family wants them to come, it's uh, difficult. They often have to drop out of college or something like that. So um, I went to a Planned Parenthood uh, clinic in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and received uh, patient care, as you mentioned, so that uh, my husband and I could uh, postpone having a family, which we did. We were married in 1954, as I said, and then our first uh, child was born in 1959. So in the meantime, my husband had been in the army and overseas, and we'd lived a year in England at Oxford and, and so on before we started our family. So. Uh, I've always uh, been very grateful to Planned Parenthood for the help that I received. And uh, like you, uh, Susan, it was um, free, as I recall. I mean, what was free was the, was the exam and the explanation of mm -hmm. how to use a diaphragm. Mm -hmm. And actually, back then, I mean, you know, 60 years ago, <laughs> there were uh, very few choices. Mm -hmm. I understand now that there are a number of, of different uh, contraceptive devices and so on. And, um, and I got some information at the local Planned Parenthood clinic about that. I know you're uh, located out on uh, East State Street, right? That's correct. So we're on East State Street right across from the Athena. Uh, Grand Theater, mm -hmm. uh, so right by the mall. Um, we are available for pre-scheduled appointments as well as same day and even walk-in appointments. So we have, you know, wide availability. Mm -hmm. um, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Correct. And what are those hours? So Mondays and Wednesdays, it is 10 to 5, mm -hmm. and Fridays is 9 to 4. Oh, okay. Now, the second and fourth um, Monday, it is an hour later, so it's going to be 11 a.m. that we open. I see. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, it's uh, important to know the location, and uh, that, as you point out, is right across from the uh, large theater out there at the mall, and only about a mile from um, Route 50 East. Correct. Uh, so that anyone, for instance, from, from eastern Athens County can readily find it if they come uh, 50 mm -hmm. and then get off for the Athens exit and you know you <laughs> first thing you know there's Athena Grand and on yeah. the other side Planned Parenthood and and there are other uh, offices in that little building right? Correct yes so there's a few other offices mm -hmm. in that building we're just on the corner mm -hmm. uh, Sweet W um, just on the corner we've got a sign Planned Parenthood yeah, so that a big you can find sign us. That tells just where it is. Exactly. Right. Yep. Yep. Just go up the ramp and you'll get to our office. Yes. Well, very good. Um, I'd like to uh, find out a little bit more about your personal backgrounds, too. Uh, Susan, uh, were you raised here in Athens County? No, I wasn't raised here in Athens. I was born and raised in Warren, Ohio, mm -hmm. um, in the northeastern part of the state. Um, went to Ohio State University mm -hmm. undergrad and Ohio State University professional school. I'm an optometrist. Mm -hmm. I graduated from optometry school back in the early 80s. Uh -huh. uh, my husband and I came to Athens before we um, had children um, and opened a private practice. And um, then two children followed um, shortly thereafter. It's a, we've um, been here now for almost 35 years. Oh, really? Um, raised our children here. It's, it's a wonderful community. I, I love Athens. And yes, yeah. yes. We came in uh, 1964. Mm -hmm. My husband was on the faculty at Ohio University in the history department. Mm -hmm. And he's been retired now for mm, 
over 15 years, I guess. Uh, we're getting along, as you can see, and as I mentioned, if we've been married uh, for 63 years almost, that's a long time ago, we were both 22, I was 22 and he was 24 when we married. So he just had his 87th birthday and mine is coming up this month. I'll soon be 85 myself. Happy birthday, you wear it <laughs> yeah, well. You do. <laughs> and uh, tell us more about, I think you said that you were really raised in Columbus. Is that correct, That Christy? is correct. So I was raised in Columbus. I also went to The Ohio State University. Mm -hmm. Uh, and graduated in 2011, um, started at Planned Parenthood shortly after that, and then um, began working in the Athens office uh, just actually about six months ago. So mm -hmm. I'm newer to the Athens community, and I agree. I really adore it. I think that um, everybody has been so kind and welcoming, and I really appreciate that. It's just been a really nice transition. I really enjoy being here. Right. Well, we, we should mention again uh, that June 9th is the um, date of the Centennial and Champagne event. Yes. <laughs> it's usually chocolate and champagne, isn't it? Yes, isn't? but we're, we're definitely promoting the centennial aspect, the centennial theme. This is a big deal. There's a lot to celebrate. There's a lot to protect and uh, value in terms of our freedoms, in terms of access to medical care. In fact, um, many, of the, uh, many of the changes that are looming in the healthcare environment would unfairly target women of color, poor women, and rural women. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons why Planned Parenthood of Greater Ohio um, for whom the Athens affiliate is, is a part. It's one of the reasons why Planned Parenthood of Greater Ohio has kept the Athens Clinic open and is fully invested in keeping the Athens Clinic open because we serve rural women, men and women, and this is, um, um, by every measure, an underserved community. So they recognize the need to make sure that yes. clinical services are, are, are kept in this area, even though... Um, the, the clinic doesn't pay for itself. You mentioned free care a little while mm -hmm. ago. May I address that just briefly? Yes, please do. Um, Planned Parenthood, because of Title X funds, provides care to um, men and women on a f sliding fee schedule based on need, based mm. on economic need. Mm, so that means if you're able to pay, of course you pay for your services, but as a college mm. woman, as a college woman, we weren't making an, any, any stateable income. We were eligible for services based on that sliding fee scale. That's yes. why, and I don't know of another entity that provides care in that fashion. That's part of the benefit from the Title X funds. The other part of the benefit from Title X funds is that it provides um, prescriptions at a very low cost. So contraception pres prescriptions, other um, STD testing kits that Christy can speak to. We we get these materials um, through a, a, a very low cost, and that helps us um, keep our keep our expenses down. Yes, but um, even with all of those benefits, the Planned Parenthood clinic uh, costs a lot to run. Of course, we're paying for professionals who give great care. We have to pay for the rent and and, and the facility. Um, and plan the the Athens clinic has not ever covered its own expenses. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We rely on donations from the public and we rely on support from the Greater Ohio Affiliate to keep our clinic open. Mm -hmm. So um, people can come on the 9th to our annual event, um, contribute via buying a ticket or a silent auction or a donation at the time, and the money will go directly to the, this Athens clinic. Oh, that's great. That's great. <clears throat> and even if you aren't able to attend on the 9th, um, please feel free, if you'd love to support, to go to our website uh, additionally, even if you're not available. Sure. But we'd love to have as many people there as we can. Yes. And I think you mentioned that website before. Yeah. It's um, PlannedParenthood.org. PlannedParenthood.org. Yep. Pretty simple to remember mm -hmm. if you remember the name Planned Parenthood. <laughs> exactly. I like that. Thank you, Christy, for helping me remember that. I was Certainly. looking at a different acronym, but PlannedParenthood.org. Oh, both of them will get you there. <laughs> okay. So PlannedParenthood.org or 
PPGOH.org. PPGOH.org. That right? That's yeah. what uh -huh. I had under my nose. Hmm. Well, and uh, history is is my bag. Uh, I graduated uh, with a history major uh, in 1951, and uh, I remember hearing fairly early on, before I visited the clinic, certainly in Ann Arbor, about Margaret Sanger, who is considered the founder of Planned Parenthood. And the centennial that uh, is being celebrated was the opening of a clinic in uh, Brooklyn, part of New York City, in uh, 1916. And um, Margaret Sanger herself was an interesting person. She was a member of a large family. She was I don't know, I've seen different things, whether she, when she was born in terms of the other brothers and sisters, but she was a member of a large family, I think maybe 11 children, as many, and her mother died relatively young. And Margaret Sanger always felt that that was probably related to the fact that she had 11 children plus mm -hmm. uh, some stillbirths or, mm -hmm. you know, other uh, problems with reproductive health. Um, so that she died at, you know, in her late 40s or maybe 50, mm -hmm. the mother of Margaret Sanger, mm -hmm. this is. Mm -hmm. She became a nurse. Uh, she was born in 1879, Margaret Sanger. Um, Higgins was the name, and she was from an Irish-American family, uh, Roman Catholic, incidentally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is, is interesting because um, we know that uh, uh, contraception is um, not, well, it's generally frowned upon, for sure, by the Roman Catholic Church. But uh, it's interesting that an Irish-American woman mm -hmm. <laughs> with a Roman Catholic background uh, did become the founder of Planned Parenthood. Now, this um, clinic that she started in uh, 1916, she was by then a nurse in her 30s, um, was only open for a week. It was, and when it opened, uh, the word spread quickly. I've read, I think it probably was in her autobiography, which I read a number of years ago, and so I, I don't remember all the details, but uh, it seemed like um, the word spread quickly in, in Brooklyn that um, there was this clinic where people could tell you how you could avoid having more more babies, you know, mm -hmm. more babies than you wanted and so on. And women were lined up around the block, uh, many of them uh, pushing baby carriages, in order to find out about this. Because at the time, it was against the law to um, even give out information uh, about contraception. It was um, considered obscene and um, when Margaret Sanger founded a newsletter which explained about contraception, it was um, banned from the mail because of the obscene nature of, of this <laughs> topic. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as, as women who all have to uh, face questions of reproductive health. <laughs> we don't feel it's obscene, we feel it's necessary. Well, we've come a long way, haven't we? Yes. In fact, Title X was passed under Richard Nixon, a Republican yes. administration in the 70s, because they realized that allowing uh, men and women um, to make decisions about how many children they had actually served the interests of the public health. So there were uh, m many reasons that uh, led the Republican um, uh, um, administration at that time to uh, found Title X funding and um, to support clinics like Planned Parenthood that gave family planning information. It's um, it's. It, it's not dictating how many children 
a woman has. It's simply allowing her to make the decision to have as many children as she'd like to have. Yes. So if Margaret Sanger came from a family of 10 and a woman still chose to have a family of 10, she certainly would be able to. That's part of the freedom mm -hmm. of choice. But we know that healthy communities, healthy families start mm -hmm. with being able to make conscious decisions about when and how many children you would have. Yes, it's a very important uh, part of uh, women's rights, mm -hmm. you might say. And it's interesting. Uh, we know it's, it's a controversial subject. And in fact, there's a new book out, very interesting book. It's called Divided We Stand. <laughs> and uh, I think that Matt has a picture of the cover of that book, Divided We Stand. Uh, Matt? There it is, yes. Divided We Stand. And uh, I think I showed this book a month or so ago on one of my other shows because this is a brand new book. It was published in February this year, just a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, it goes into, they have a subtitle there that you can't really read, but it, it's how it says something about how a battle over women's rights versus family values uh, has divided and polarized American politics for many years, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very interesting book. The uh, cover itself shows, uh, it harks back to a time that I remember in 1977 when the uh, country had 56 uh, conferences for women's, uh, women's, it, it was a follow-up to Mexico City. Mexico City was the place that had the first uh, International Women's Year celebration in 1975. And then in 1977, in this country, there were these uh, 56 state and regional meetings. I was involved with the Ohio meeting at that time in 1977, which was held in Columbus in June of uh, 1977. And uh, well, the divide had started earlier, of course, but it just became a lot sharper during the 70s. Uh, when I say it started earlier, um, you mentioned Title X of family, or perhaps Susan, you mentioned <laughs> yes. whatever. Anyway, it was uh, passed during Richard Nixon's presidency, mm -hmm. um, and it was to, to help with um, reproductive health concerns. And that was in the early 70s. Uh, Roe versus Wade, which um, legalized abortion, safe and legal abortion, was passed in uh, 1973. So um, it was a time when people were beginning to think very seriously about questions of reproductive health and women's rights and mm -hmm. so on. And um, the title refers to, of course, the fact that Many people view uh, women's rights as being against family values. The opponents of abortion, for instance, mm -hmm. um, like to put it in terms of family values being opposed to abortion and, and often to contraception even, mm -hmm. uh, for that matter. But um, I must say that I feel that family values <laughs> should be an important part of anybody's reproductive choices. And uh, family values do not necessarily say that contraception or even abortion are bad choices to make. It depends so much on the circumstances and what the individual's beliefs and values are. I agree. Uh, Lois, and here again, you're getting to, um, you, we're underscoring the point of individual self-determination and um, freedoms that allow you to exercise um, 
what you believe in and allow you to plan, uh, plan your life, plan your family, and, um, and, and uh, seek a, a better tomorrow for yourself and for your family. Um, you know, I'd also, if I may follow up to the point that you, um, that we mentioned a short while ago about the Athens Clinic here and that the clinic is considered a critical access clinic. Yes. Um, this, this area, as you know, is one of the poorest areas in the state. Yes. Um, Ohio's poverty rate is about 15 percent, but here in Athens County we have a 33 percent poverty rate. It's the highest in the state, I believe. Thank you, yes. Thank you for adding that. Yeah. I, I, I believe that as well. I know that to be true as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, people who need to have this kind of care uh, frequently are um, uh, need to rely on clinics that provide sliding fee scales, access to Medicaid funding, mm -hmm. and uh, with the legislation that is uh, being considered now, uh, that Medicaid funding is in jeopardy. Yes. If, uh, if we lose Medicaid funding in Ohio alone, 33,000 patients who came to Planned Parenthood last year mm -hmm. would not be able to come to Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. uh, because Planned Parenthood would be dropped from um, eligibility to provide this kind of care. Uh, that's, uh, that's a pretty big number. And an awful lot of them are, are actually here in, in Athens County. Yes. We saw over 2,000 patients this last year. Is that correct, uh, I think it was around 1,200. Oh, okay, um, thank you. Yeah, but we did around 2,000 STI tests. Um, yes, yeah, so we certainly see a a, you know, a good portion of yeah. the Athens population um, for do various come, reasons. Do people come from from outside Athens County? I mean, are there, do you have some patients from like Certainly. Morgan County or Meg's? Yeah, we see a lot of, you know, counties represented in our population. I see. Um, even as far as West Virginia, not really? super far, mm -hmm. but, um, mm -hmm. and then other counties that are close by, Logan, uh -huh. Meg's, like you said, Madison, yeah, uh -huh. so. A lot, you know, a lot of various patients coming from various right. Locations. It's a, it's a center in southeast Ohio, which serves a, six or seven counties actually. Right, right. Because the fact of the matter is, there's not a lot of other health centers that provide the services that we do um, within these counties. So right, we like to stay open to. And I those. think that we should make it clear that, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, abortion is not one of the choices that uh, is available at uh, in Athens County. It's That's not correct. available at the hospital. Uh, you certainly don't do abortions uh, at your clinic. And um, in addition to contraception, what are some of the other services that uh, Planned Parenthood provides for poor women? Sure. So contraception is a large portion of what we do, but mm -hmm. we also offer a large portion of STI testing. Um, STI, what's that? So STI is sexually transmitted infections. Oh, diseases. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So oh, STDs mm -hmm. previously. Mm -hmm. um, and so chlamydia and gonorrhea currently are going up, unfortunately. Uh -huh. So Planned Parenthood wants to do what we can to make sure that we can provide the screening to yes. patients who need it critically um, and treatment as well. So mm -hmm. uh, STI testing and treatment is one facet of our services. In addition to cervical cancer screenings, clinical breast exams, um, annual well woman visits, um, there's a large, a large spectrum. Yes, yes. It's Contraception is not the only uh, not. service that mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood gives at all. It's, it's very important that uh, a clinic that has, as you point out, a sliding scale of, of uh, fees, uh, poorer people pay less, mm -hmm. but they get good service. And uh, people who can pay more <laughs> get the same good service and by paying more, they help support uh, keeping the clinic itself open for its wide variety of important uh, services, including testing for the STI, sexually, uh, sexually <laughs> transmitted, transmitted infections. infections. Yes. <laughs> yes. May I make a comment sure. on that point, uh, Lois? 
When I was uh, president of the Planned Parenthood Board here in Southeast Ohio, I was shocked to learn that uh, one in four young people between the age of 20 and 25 tested positive for chlamydia. We oh, had dear, yes. the highest rate of chlamydia, um, the second or third highest rate in the country. Um, and I understand that a chlamydia rate, and it's a dangerous disease because it frequently has no early symptoms, mm -hmm. but it can lead to infertility. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know you have it, then you can give it to your partner and your partner can uh, give it to someone else. So this, this um, young people need to be educated about sexually transmitted diseases right. and they need to be tested for them and they need to go someplace where they get complete medical information and good care and um, I'm describing our Planned Parenthood clinics pretty much completely in that statement. Well, do you know what the chlamydia rate is now in Athens County by um, chance? So I believe, let me look, I think I have it here. I well, want to one of the while well, she's finding yeah. that, let me just mention that these sexually transmitted uh, infections pose a threat not only to the health of, of the women and their male partners, but potentially to a baby's. A lot Absolutely. of babies can, if their parent, if their mother is, is infected, mm -hmm. they can be born with uh, the disease themselves and even blindness can result in some, time, some cases. So it's really very important that uh, there is this service to check on uh, sexually transmitted infections. And you have some statistics yes. for us? So according to these statistics from 2016, um, 799 of 100,000 residents tested positive for chlamydia. Um, so a large rate. Here in, here in the city of Athens. That is the city of Athens. Almost yeah. twice the state rate. That's oh, correct. Really? Yeah. yeah. So now Goodness. it may be skewed because we're home to Ohio University and yes. we have a lot of young adults, uh, sexually right. active young adults, but it really bears um, repeating that we have, a, we have a high rate here in this area and um, people can have this disease and not know they have it. So Planned Parenthood offers these services for testing and complete education. It's one of the reasons why I firmly believe education is um, one of the three um, uh, legs of the stool for Planned Parenthood as mm -hmm. an organization to mm -hmm. make sure that people understand. It all starts with, with education and understanding. And then, of course, the clinical services for testing and treatment. Yes, it's uh, most important to consider these things. I want to um, look a little broader now. <laughs> and uh, I think... Um, uh, Matt has a picture of my t-shirt. I'm infamous uh, as being a t-shirt wearer. Uh, this t-shirt uh, actually says, help equalize population, environment, the balance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you notice the way it's, it's not balanced here, it's leaning. Mm -hmm. Population is leaning on environment, mm -hmm. and equalizing the balance would, would help. A lower population is less of a burden on the environment, I think is the message of this shirt. <laughs> I've had it for a long time, and uh, I can't remember where I got it, but it says the Population Institute, and I do believe that it was the time there was a an elderly gentleman, he seemed elderly at the time uh, because he came you know, 20 or 30 years ago here to Athens to speak. I think it might have been the man who was involved with the Population Institute, but I remember hearing him speak on campus. And um, this is a question more than personal choice. It's a social question. It's a larger social question in terms of, well, as an example, um, I was born in 1932. And in 1930, 
the um, world population had just reached two billion people. Two billion people in 1930. Today's world population is more than three times that amount. It's over seven billion people worldwide. And that's one reason why there's you know, more CO2 being sent up into the atmosphere from power plants and, and uh, problems with other greenhouse gases, you know, and so on, simply because there are a lot more people now than there, than there were when I was born. And it's a problem that, uh, Christy, you especially are going to be seeing because you're a relatively young person. <laughs> hmm. So you'll be around um, when you're my age. <laughs> That's going to be uh, 50 or 60 years from now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe we'll, but you know, we, we count so much on technology. And very often technology brings its own burdens. That's true. That's true. Well, we actually, Planned Parenthood is... Um, attempting their their the organization as a whole is very forward thinking they're hoping to use technology um, for better services for Planned Parenthood patients mm -hmm. in the future they're sure. they're looking at technology um, to provide um, prescription coverages um, again to provide more access and and contact points with with the patient population that we serve so uh, I guess there's two sides to every coin. There's no question mm, that technology yes. poses some problems, but Planned Parenthood is um, planning and looking forward to incorporate te technology in their sure. medical services to the greatest degree possible. Right. And uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, when I received Planned Parenthood services, um, the diaphragm was about the only Thing that uh, could be used except for the rhythm meth method uh, of keeping uh, marital relations uh, out of the fertile period between women's periods. Uh, period and period there. But you know what I mean. <laughs> understood. <Yes>. Understood. <laughs> you know, maybe Christy could speak to long-acting um, contraception. It's called LARC. I've just learned uh -huh. about it recently. Oh. Yeah, so we do offer a wide variety of contraceptions at the Athens yeah. office. Um, we offer the short-term methods like the pill, the depot shop, but we also offer and really enjoy, you know, utilizing the LARC, so that's long active uh, reversible contraceptives. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, acronym encases um, devices such as the implant, which mm -hmm. is a little rod that's in your arm for oh, four really? years. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have to worry about a daily, you know, taking your pill. I used to set an alarm on my phone. I have the implant and mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Mm -hmm. That's really excellent. And I got mine from Planned Parenthood. So mm -hmm. that's been really wonderful. We also offer IUDs. Um, so mm -hmm. IUDs or IUCs are intrauterine contraceptives or devices. Okay. Um, so basically it's a little T that is in your uterus and prevents pregnancy that way. Mm -hmm. um, and so those range from anywhere between three and 12 years um, oh, really? based on the method. Mm -hmm. So you can get over a decade of pregnancy prevention um, all in one visit. Right, you and but those it. are, as you mentioned, it's something which is put in the woman's uterus, mm -hmm. but that means that it's reversible. It can be taken it out is. Yes. when so. uh, it's decided that it's time to have a exactly. start a family. Any of these devices can be removed whenever, you know, right. you as a person decide that you're ready to have them removed. Right. Um, and as I say, uh, having just one choice, basically, either the rhythm method or uh, the diaphragm uh, 60 years ago, now there are a number of different, uh, and I suppose they have risks that people should understand too. Yeah, there are certainly risks with any mm -hmm. birth control or hormonal or medication option. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just understanding what you're looking for in your birth control, weighing the potential risks. But a lot of birth control methods are very safe. And the clinicians at Planned Parenthood will definitely go over a wide range of mm -hmm. health history topics to make sure that they're going to get you the right method. I see. Right. So that's part of the educational uh, out 
reach of Planned Parenthood is mm -hmm. to explain the various methods of contraception which are available today, mm -hmm. many of which are, are reversible. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> pretty important, mm -hmm. pretty important yeah. to know that. Absolutely. Definitely. Uh, well, uh, let's mention again that uh, Planned Parenthood of Athens is having uh, an upcoming event just this coming week. We are uh, taping on the 2nd of June, and the event is, is actually one week from today, on June 9th, and it's going to be held at Walter Hall. Uh, Walter Hall is, is near the Maya Lynn Memorial <laughs> uh, here in Athens which is uh, a little less uh, noticeable these days because they've started p planting more trees around there. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, still a wonderful, something wonderful done by our Athens native, yeah. Maya Lin, Indeed. Uh, who's so famous for the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, actually. Uh, so Walter Hall, and uh, that's also a, right across the street from the great big basketball arena. So yeah. you can't miss the place. It's across from the Convocation Center and the stadium. So if you're an Ohio University athletics fan, um, the Walter mm -hmm. Hall Rotunda is right in the middle. Right, neighborhood. right, right in the middle. Right. Uh, there's the Convocation Center here, there's the stadium here, and Walter Hall is right there. Mm -hmm. Right <laughs> in the X marks the spot. It'll be very easy to find. If you can find your way to the stadium, your, your stone's throw yes, from the rotunda. Yes, that's right. And there's plenty of parking uh, nearby mm -hmm. uh, on the other side uh, of where the rotunda itself is. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a large parking space, and there's a large parking space by the stadium, too. Yes. So um, should be no problem in finding a parking place to come in to Walter Hall, go to the rotunda, which obviously from the name rotunda is the round place on the corner of uh, Walter Hall, and uh, find that event. What are those hours again? Yeah, the hours of the events. Yes. I believe it starts at 7.30. It starts right? at 6.30. 6.30. Six yes, it actually, it yeah. starts at 6.30. Um, and again, uh, the featured speaker is Nikki Johnson. Um, she's a curator and an artist of, of wide acclaim um, with emphasis on women's health, women's issues, uh, social justice issues. Is she from Ohio? Is she from nearby here? Or you know, where? I believe she's in, um, she's either in Wisconsin or or she's Minnesota. She's somewhat nationally known. She, yeah, she's nationally known, but she's not in Ohio. She's not mm -hmm. based in Ohio. Okay. I believe it's Wisconsin, but I, I'm not quite sure. Okay. Yeah. But she's going to be a, a featured speaker with the event beginning at uh, 6.30 with uh, heavy hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> That's right, you can have dinner there. And a cash yeah. bar. And, dancing. Uh, yeah, dancing. Live dancing. music, thank yes. you very much. Nice. There will be live music well. as well. Well, I, uh, our dancing days are about over. We're we're just lucky that we <laughs> can walk. You can definitely along. still dance. <laughs> I dance. You can dance. <laughs> so it sounds like it's going to be a wonderful evening on uh, June 9th, which is a week from today. It's, in other words, it's on a Friday. Correct. Friday, June 9th, at Walter Hall, beginning at 6:30. And there are various fundraising um, parts as well as the ticket itself, which uh, they're asking $100 because, remember, this is uh, raising funds to keep our local Athens clinic operating. It's a little more than the ticket price has been in the past, but $100 for our 100th birthday yes. seemed like um, Good a, idea. A fit, yes, a, a fitting uh a fitting amount. Right. <laughs> um, and we always, as, I, as we've uh, said earlier today, we, we provide care for over a thousand people every year in the Athens Clinic alone run over 2,000 
um, sexually transmitted disease tests provide a wide range of services. So we know the public values and appreciates it. This is the time to come out and show that support. That's right. And to remember Margaret Sanger and Brooklyn in 1916 and those women who uh, went around the corner with their baby carriages and so on to find out something about family planning Absolutely. way back in a hundred years ago and being shut down as something obscene. Well, I think we can say that there's been some progress. I think we can agree there's been some progress. <laughs> I think we can also agree that um, it takes uh, it takes vigilant investment in this cause too. We can never assume that uh, the freedoms that we have, the access that we have now yes. is guaranteed. I never thought we would um, bring access to uh, contraception back into question, but with health care reform, um, there are forces that argue that um, contraception is, is, is problematic to provide for women. So I think this is our time to remember that we can't, we've made lots of progress, we can never take it for granted though. Right, it's uh, reproductive health for women. And, uh, you know, I, I can certainly appreciate that there are, are religious scruples by some groups uh, against contraception and especially against abortion. But um, family values are very important. The family values of people who support Planned Parenthood and support uh, reproductive health for women. Those are family values as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they are very important family values that we must uh, try to uh, protect. However, there's been, uh, as was pointed out in the, that book that I showed you before, you know, about divided we stand, uh, it's become almost a question between women's rights and, quote, family values, which is what is claimed by the other side. I don't know why it is they always get the good slogans, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, it's like, right to life. Oh, hey, who could oppose right to life? But they are speaking about the right to life of the unborn, mm -hmm. whereas I think that there is a family value in the right to life of the born, yes. of the women, of the families that are born, and that that should not be forgotten. And it's something that, uh, well, um, I, have a, I have a button at home. Uh, you have an interesting button there, Susan. Yes, mm -hmm. well, this button says um, Planned Parenthood 100 years. Yeah. And, and I wore it today. It seemed fitting. We are celebrating our centennial celebration. That's right. So this is my this is my chance to wear this. <laughs> yes. Happy birthday to Planned Parenthood button. Happy birthday <laughs> to Planned Parenthood for sure. Well, I'm a member of a group called um, uh, RCRC, uh, which has to do with uh, religious choice. Um, it's a group which uh, is composed of some religious groups that are interested in women's health in particular. Mm -hmm. And they see it as a religious value, actually, mm -hmm. to support women's health through efforts like Planned Parenthoods. So it says RCRC on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm afraid I left it at home. So. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get another chance to wear that button. I'm, oh, I'm confident I think so, you will. Sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll plan to wear it on June 9th. How's that? Perfect. Great. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> because that's going to be the day that uh, we meet at Walter Hall at 6.30 uh, next Friday evening for heavy hors d'oeuvres, uh, silent auction, live, dancing, dancing, live, live music. Live music. Etc. All these things are going to be uh, at uh, Walter Hall on June 9th. And so it's, that's just next week, and I hope that people, if 
people want to find out more about the tickets again, can you tell us, Christy? Yeah, so you can either go to ppgoh.com or Planned Parenthood, or I'm sorry, dot org, or Planned Parenthood dot org. Planned Parenthood or org. for the event exclusively, um, if you visit www.bit.ly, that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash P-P-G-O-H Athens event, that will get you there as well specifically That's right. to the event page. So we hope that people who uh, see our um, event today, uh, here for Women Today and Yesterday, will uh, check up further and plan to come on June 9th and support Planned Parenthood and family planning in 100 years. Right, and celebrate family values yes. as well. The family, family values, values. That, come, that come with the ability to um, plan when you'll have your children and how many you'll have and, and all of those other critical choices that come with uh, uh, living, living life as a family. Yes, yes. That's uh, what we need. And I want to thank again my, my guests, uh, Christy and Susan. And their names should be appearing on our, our screen there. Uh, this is Lois Whaley for Women Today and Yesterday.